Hello everyone. In this video, I'm just gonna explain, you know, the very high level flow of my very first agentic AI application, which you can see on my screen. So let's quickly ask a very first question or I'll just give a very first task, which says, what is the primary language spoken in Brazil? Write the answer to a file named Brazil underscore language dot text. And then you can just run and then you can see the flow, how this task is actually going to be executed by the agent, which is running behind this UI part, right? So now if you just see what this is doing, which is self-explanatory here in the agent's work law, agent starting task. So the task is what is primary language spoken in Brazil? And we need to save this answer into the one specific file, which is Brazil underscore language.txt. So the very step one which agent takes is, you know, it's try to figure it out what kind of task it is, right? And then it's see, it's try to understand which tool it requires to use to, you know, start working on that given task. So the very first thing it figures out, figures it out is to just figure it out what is the primary language spoken in Brazil. It requires to do a web search. Right, so this is how it decide. Okay, now the tool which is needed is web search. Then it's try to just use the sub API through which it's try to get the answer. Of it. Once it has an answer, then it's try to save that answer right into the memory so that it can just further check whether the further or the future action required to be taken within a task or not. Right. So again, it goes into the thinking mode and again, it's try to see what is the next task which I need to perform. Right. So the next thing is now we have an answer for the primary language with the help of a web search tool. But now I need to save that into the Brazil underscore language and this text. That is what the task says. Here, if you just see, it says that now it is thinking. I mean, now what tool needs to be used? So now it is deciding, OK, the right to file tools is needed. And this is what the argument which we have. And then it's try to put that into the file. Then again, it reevaluate the task and try to understand from whatever the action has been taken so far, which is saved in a memory, whether the task is completed or not. And then again, it goes into the thinking mode and try to understand. And then it figures out now the task is completed because now we have a final answer based on the task. So we are done here. So now it says it is done, right? If I just go back to my ID, this is where you can see this Brazil language test and we can see Portuguese is the primary language spoken in a Brazil, right? So this is a very high level working flow and you can ask any question, right? Now, if we just think about, because we heard this word agentic AI a lot, right? If you are a developer, right? Or if you are a non-technical person, let me just run this work flow, which will actually explain how the things are happening behind the scene. And definitely I'm just going to, once this is done, then I'm going to explain you the code part as well. You can see we put in a task input, then AI agent comes into the picture and start thinking. So it's actually just dividing your task into the small activity and try to see whether that tool is needed or not. Here you can see we have multiple tools right now, but this list can be extended depending upon the further intelligence which we add here. So we have tools like calculate, get time, remember, recall. Remember, as I mentioned, that this is where the memory is for the dividing of one giant task into the small, small activity. That is where it keep recording it. And once that is done, then it just try to recalculate for the next activity. And if you just remember now, if if suppose we have asked this question, what is the capital of France? And remember it to write it in the file. So this is a very high level flow, which you can see on my screen, which I have already explained. This is how the flow actually works. You know, first it's need to find out the capital of France, but what tool is needed? Obviously, where's it? Then it try to think, now I need to remember this information. Yes, you need to remember this information and then it just put it in a right, right? So that is how actually it works, right? And then it's again, see, okay, now what is the fact next activity which I need to do to just fulfill the complete task? Then it says it has to be saved in one file. So now it again goes back to the agent and try to search whether we have a tool through which we can just put it into the file. So then it find that, okay, write to file is a tool which requires to run that. And again, it just do the, uh, it, it take the action and just put it in a uh, memory and then finally again it goes into the thinking mode again it reevaluate all the activities which is required to fulfill the task and then it says that okay now the final answer is ready right so that is how the flow works right let's now think about let's just do a very high level you know code walk
right? If you just see, I have just written a very, very simple agent here. If you just see, bunch of libraries I am using here. You know, since we are making a request to the Gemini uh, large language model, so that's the reason we have this first one where we are just, you know, using this one, but this is now duplicated. So definitely we have to use the newer one. But anyways, I'll do that, right? Then we have this embedding model as well because we are saving whatever the response we are getting for already executing tasks, we have to save that into the vector db right that would actually require to do to just have a semantic search because that actually increase the performance as well to save the output of the action which we have taken so far and we are using you know the facebook provided semantic search artificial intelligence vector db which is in memory db rather than using a pine cone type of data database right if you just see here we are initializing uh you know all the parameters like model or the api keys which we will be needing you know the vector databases related uh you know files where you know the vector db is going to store the data you know and then we hit this is where we have the list of the tools so if you want to add a future tool next tool you all you need to do is to just add here right probably i can just try try to just create you know uh, ui based uh, you know configurational tool for this agent but that is something which i will be doing in a future right then we have a definition for each and every tool right so we have the tool definition for calculate like what is supposed to be happen then we have a get time then we have a remember like how we're going to save that into the you know files database and then we have a read file and then we have our write file which is a very standard you know python code and then we have a recall where we are just trying to get the data from the memory which we are using here as a vector db for files so facebook provided uh, vector db then we have a web search that as i mentioned we are using a sub api here so you need an api key but if you just look at the code code is very very straightforward and if you are a developer you would love to write all these logic in python and this is where our actual logic start as i mentioned the process is first you have to think about it and that is where we are making a request to the uh, large language model and that is where your task is actually being analyzed and divided into the small small activities you know to see how we can achieve that goal and then it start you know utilizing the power of large language model to just start executing those small small tasks to achieve the biggest task which user has asked us to complete right once we have that information generated then we have this execute tool so this is where the orchestration is happening so if you just see this is where actually the loop is happening uh you know as you see on this on the application you know it has a loop because first it start first it start you know dividing the task and then it start thinking you know it's applied try to search a tool and then execute the tool and just put it in a memory and then it just goes into the another loop and that is where this run function comes into the picture and we can say it's kind of orchestration of all these processes think act observe and then again think and then observe until you get the final result and here we have a maximum step is five definitely we can just make this uh, configurable through the ui but these are the thing which we can do in a future right so this is just a very high level logic in which so if you are a programmer you can easily think how you have to design this right so now the very interesting thing and the future integration which i'm going to do is I'm going to implement the MCP, which is a model context protocol, because we know that if we have an AI agent and if an AI agent has to communicate to the external world or so the external application, external databases, whatever the external system it has to interact it, you know, Claude has provided this MCP, which is model context protocol to be used. So I will just try to implement that and I will just put all those tools on the MCP server because MCP protocol provide that we have to have a server and the client based architecture, you know, and then we will just enroll all these tools on a server and then through the client, our AI agent can just talk to the client and the client will just interact with the server and then server will make the request to the external system and put it all the information back to the client and then our AI agent will process that information. So that is something which we're going to do in a next video. But that is how you can just build your own application. Old. So this is what the agentic AI is. So you don't have to worry about, you don't have to think it is something which you cannot understand. If you are a programmer, if you can just logical think this is how you have to do it. So all you need to do is to use the large language model and just try to provide a logic through which 
your cyst, your application can think, act, and observe by utilizing the power of a large language model and your creativity and your innovation, how you can design the code around it, right? And you can utilize a lot of tools as well, right? So that's it from my side for this video. If you have any feedback or any suggestion, or if you want me to include, uh, you know, any further intelligence into this, you can just put that into the comment section. You can directly reach out to me as well, right? And all these codes are already published in my GitLab and GitHub uh, repo. So if you want, you can just get the access. You will always find the latest code. The last push I have done was 16 hours before. So this should have a latest code and I'll make sure whenever whatever the new changes I'm gonna make, you know, I will push here. Right. Same thing. I what I have done is I have just write an article. If you really want to get a more detail about how the specifics, you know, uh, you know, implemented, so you can just uh, you know read through my medium article. You know, you can find the link into the description part as well. This is where how I built my first agent AI. Right. This will just give you the sense like how I how I started you know building this application because I was also I was also hearing this word a lot. Because my way is to understand everything but just writing a code. But when I start writing a code, then I realize this agentic AI is nothing but it's just writing some code, utilizing all the powers for which, you know, and new tools and the technology is providing. But here, the large language model, which we are calling the artificial intelligence related technology, this is what is giving us, you know, uh, the more important foundational ground which we can utilize to just write our agentic AI. Then the next, uh, you know, article which I have published, uh, you know, you can see here. This is the second one uh, where I just included, you know, the persistent, uh, you know, memory by using the fast vector DB, and I also give the file system access, and that's the reason you are able to see that we are able to store the output based on the task which we have asked. Right, we can ask anything, whatever you want. Like this question, how many moons does Mars have? Multiply that number by 50. We can just run this, and again, we can just see the answer, which is so. Now you can just make it more complicated task as well. It is failing. I will just fix that. There would be some issue, you know, on the terminal. Uh, I can see what is that, and you can just fix that. So that's not something which you should be worried about. It says that the quick accessor required the response to contain valid part, but it seems like there is some parsing logic issue with when it is just making a connection. So I will just figure that out and I will just fix that also. Okay, so that's it from my side for this video. Uh, as always, uh, you know, if you really like this video, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for my channel so that whenever I just publish my next video where I will be, uh, you know, integrating an MCP uh, you know, with this agentic AI to just understand how MCP actually works, you know. Uh, so as always, uh, thanks for watching this and stay healthy and keep learning new things.